Hey y'all, welcome back. Um, my two-year-old is inside taking a nap right now, so I figured I'd come out here and try to finish the flooring so I can move on to something else. Um, I just wanted to show you guys quickly, um, if you've got you know, a spot in your camper on the floor that's got some water damage and you wanna know how to repair it, um, you know, this would be a good video for you. Um, so I have already taken all of the rot out um, and it's, you can't really see it that well. Uh, if you wanna look at what it looked like before, go check out my Instagram, cause I've got some really good pictures there. Um, but basically, um, you know, say you've got some rot in this corner right here and you wanna fix it. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of peel away the rot until you come to um, a floor truss. Now you've got trusses running the entire length of your camper. Um, sometimes you get lucky and they're all evenly spaced. Sometimes you don't get lucky and they're shoddy craftsmanship when they built the camper and they're not evenly spaced, but um, you know, it's kind of a guessing game where it's gonna be. Um, so what I would do, um, kind of peel it back from the corner, reach your hand under the wood and try to find out where your first uh, floor joist is. And you're gonna wanna cut in the middle of that floor joist um, basically the full length of your water damage plus a little more. Um, if you get lucky, your joists won't be rotten underneath. Um, you know, worst case scenario, you'll have to replace it um, or support it or both. Um, so for this one, I went ahead and um, cut along the length right here. Um, if it's on an edge wall like this, you're gonna wanna add a support in the middle. Um, it just kinda helps the, put some, um, take some pressure off the side that's closest to the wall here because you notice it's kinda, it's kinda tight right here on the wall and there's not really a good place for um, the OSB that's gonna go on top to rest and be stable. So I added a little um, support right there in the middle. And back here, um, I, I made my wood a little thicker so I could, you know, kind of have a little ledge right here. Um, so once you've got your framing done, um, put some insulation in and I think I've got some right here. So this is, I think it's, I can't really remember. I've got the package right here. Hold on. I've got all my junk sitting right here in the paper. Here we go. This is also on my Instagram, but um, R13, basically what you use, I use um, a full um, sheet for the floors, half for the walls, and sometimes half for the ceiling, sometimes full for the ceiling if I've got room. Um, so you'll need some new insulation if any of it's wet. Um, I always just like to replace that. So. Um, after you've got your framing done, get your piece of wood, and this is OSB. Um, most campers are going to be, I think it's like 5 8 OSB, but it really just depends on your camper, so measure the wood that you take out. Um, you don't have to put OSB in, but it's just, I like OSB in floors. Um, and it's mainly what they use in campers, even though it's really should be called SOB. That's what my father-in-law calls it, which is hilarious, but it's pretty accurate. So anyway, um, just gonna tap it in. And then, if I can find my bit, um, and I march right here where I put my support in the middle. So I'll know where to drill. And then I like to drill some pilot holes first. Just makes it easier for the screws to go in. And then put a couple screws on your old piece, that way it doesn't pop up. And these are just two inch deck screws. They work really well on this OSB. 
Um, and they don't pop up or and they sink in really well. Oh, my battery died. But you get the gist of that. Um, just put your screws in um, and it'll kind of sink it down where it's flush. Um, now, let's move over here and let me show you. All right, so over here, um, you can kind of see better where I repaired the water damage. Um, this is the floor joist that I was talking about. You see it kind of cut halfway. That way this new piece of OSB has a place to rest on. Now right here is where I replaced one of the pieces. Um, so this was the old piece. This is the new piece. And this right here is a support um, that kind of joins the two together. So I put in some pocket holes right here to join these two together. And then from this side, I just screwed it in a piece of wood. Um, two on the new piece, two on the old piece. And if you're repairing floor damage, I usually like to go maybe four, five, six inches past what you think the water damage is because, you know, it can kind of still soak in the wood and it can still be wet. So I just like to make sure that there's really nothing left. Um, so for this one, let's see if I can do it one handed. Pretty much the same thing. Um, measure, cut. If I can get this right, get my hammer. So you want it to be snug, but you don't want it to be super tight. So just kind of work it in there. Sometimes you might need to tap it in a direction. And way a little bit. Okay, so that is pretty much the gist of it. Um, and again, you'll screw, um, you know, right here, mark um, your trusses right there. Um, I'm actually going to go back and trim this one a little more because you see it's not really laying flat in the corner right there. So I'll go take a little bit off that. Um, now if you've got some major water damage like I did, you can see where the new sheet is right there. Um, I typically like to work in sections of four feet because that is what a sheet of OSB is. So I actually cut this back like in the middle a little farther just so I could have a full sheet. And then you see I placed a spot there and I placed a spot there. So if you can, if you have big sections like this, try to work in sheets or, or you know, in sections of four feet. Because um, usually you'll just have to trim the edges to make it fit. So, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, if y'all have some more questions, let me know. Um, and I'll try to answer them the best I can. Hope y'all have a good afternoon.